Welcome to Junior High School Math Series. In this presentation, let us discuss relations and functions. Here are our learning competencies. Illustrate relations and functions. Verify if a given relation is a function. Lastly, determine dependent and independent variables. Let us begin with some definitions. A relation is a rule that relates values from two different sets, usually written as a set of ordered pairs x, y, where x is an element of the first set called the domain and y is an element of the second set called the range. A function is a relation where each element in the domain is related to only one element in the range, following certain rules. A function is denoted by f of x equals y, read as f of x equals y, which means that a function is a set of ordered pairs x, y, such that no two ordered pairs have the same value of x but different values of y. Hence, when given an ordered pair 3, negative 1, which is associated to a certain function f, we say that f of 3 equals negative 1. Let us have some examples. Identify whether each of the following is a function or a mere relation. Number 1, set m is the set of ordered pairs 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, and the pattern continues. Notice that each values of x is related to exactly one value of y. Hence, set m is a function. Number 2, a is the set of ordered pairs 3, 7, 4, 11, 5, 15, and 6, 19. Again, each value of x or the first element in each ordered pair is related to exactly one value of y. Therefore, set A is a function. Number 3, set T is the set of ordered pairs 0, 3, 1, 6, 2, 9, 0, 12. Notice that 0 as a value of x is related to more than one values of y, 0, 3, 0, 12. In another way, we see it as the value of x is repeated. Hence, number 3 is a mere relation. Number 4, we have set h with ordered pairs negative 1, 2, 0, 4, 1, 6, 2, 4. Although the value of y is repeated, that is 4, this is a function since each value of x is related to only one value of y. 0 is related to 4 only, and 2 is related to 4 only. Number 5, s is the set of ordered pairs negative 1, 4, 2, 5, negative 1, 7, 3, 6. Negative 1 as a value of x is related to more than one value of y. Negative 1, 4, negative 1, 7. This is not a function, but a mere relation. Let us continue with some more definitions. Mapping diagram. This is used to represent the relationship between two sets in a relation. A mapping diagram represents a function if each element in the input values, the domain, is paired with only one element in the output values the range. The mapping diagram of a relation also shows the type of relation that exists between the two sets. We have one-to-one -one relation. This exists when each of the element in the first set is paired with only one element in the second set. Let's say the domain has the elements 1, 2, 3, and 4, and the second set has the elements 4, 8, 12, 16. Each element in the domain is paired with only one element in the range. 
written in set notation, the relation would be 1, 4, 2, 8, 3, 12, 4, 16. One to many relation exists when an element in the first set is paired with two or more elements in the second set. For the first set, let's say we have the elements shoes and umbrella. And for the second set, we have the elements red, green, yellow, blue. Shoes is paired with red in the range. Also, shoes is paired with green. While umbrella is paired with yellow. And umbrella is also paired with blue. Notice that an element in the domain is paired with two elements in the range. Written in set notation, the relation would be shoes red, shoes green, umbrella yellow, umbrella blue. Many to one relation exists when two or more elements in the domain is paired with only one element in the range. Let's have the elements of the domain as one, two, three, and four. And the elements in the range are A, B, and C. 1 is paired to A, 2 to B, 3 is paired to C, and 4 is also paired to C. Notice that there are two elements in the first set, the domain, paired with only one element in the range, that is C. Written in set notation, this would be 1A, 2B, 3C, 4C. Many-to-many -many relation exists when two or more elements in the first set are paired with two or more elements in the second set. Let's have the first set with elements 1, 2, and 3. Also the second set with elements A, B, C, D. 1 is paired with A, 2 is paired with B, 3 is paired with C, also 3 is paired with D. And also we have another pairing, 2 with A. Written in set notation, the relation would be 1A, 2A, 2B, 3C, 3D. The vertical line test. A visual way to determine whether the graph that represents a relation is a function. If there exists a vertical line which intersects a graph in more than one point, then the graph does not represent a function. That means to identify whether a graph that represents a relation is a function, we use the vertical line test. If the vertical line test may intersect the graph in more than one point, then the graph is not a function. Let's have some examples. Use the vertical line test to determine whether each of the following graphs represent a function. Number one is a graph representing a line. Let us use the vertical line test. When we draw the vertical line test, let us make sure that it will intersect the graph. However, we draw the vertical line test, it will only intersect this line at a single point. Therefore, this line that represents a relation is a function. Number two, the graph of a parabola. Again, let us use the vertical line test. However, we draw the vertical line test, it will intersect the parabola opening upward at a single point. Hence, this is a function. Let's have another one. A circle. When we draw a vertical line test, the vertical line may intersect the circle at a single point when it is tangent. Yet, there is a way or there are parts on the graph of the circle where the vertical line will intersect the graph at more than one point. Hence, the graph representing a circle is not a function. Number four, a parabola that opens to the left. 
When we draw a vertical line, it intersects the graph at more than one point. Hence, the parabola that opens to the left is not a function. Next, a graph representing a cubic relation. However, we draw the vertical line test, we will observe that it will only intersect this graph at a single point. Hence, this is a function. Next, we have an equation. An equation is a statement that asserts the equality of two mathematical expressions. An equation is a function if and only if for every value of x, there is only one corresponding value for y. Let's have some examples. Determine whether each of the following equations represents a function. Letter A, 3x minus 2y equals 6. Letter B, x is equal to y squared plus 2y. Letter C, y is equal to the square root of 2x plus 8. And letter D, x squared plus y squared equals 4. Let's start with letter A. This is a function because for each value of x, there is exactly one value for y. Some examples of this are if x equals 0, there is only one value for y, which is negative 3. If x equals 2, there is only one value for y, that is 0. The values of y are obtained by substituting the values of x in the given relation. Let us have letter B. x is equal to y squared plus 2y. This is not a function because same values of x yield different values for y. An example is when x is equal to 0. Notice that when x equals 0 is substituted to the relation, 0 is equal to y times the quantity y plus 2. The right-hand side in factor 4. Each factor is equated to 0, so we have y equals 0 or y equals negative 2. When written in a set notation, 0, 0, 0, negative 2 will be part of the relation. Hence, this is not a function. Let us see y is equal to the square root of 2x plus a. This is a function because for each value of x, there is exactly one value for y. For example, if x equals 4, we have y is equal to the square root of 2 times 4 plus 8. 2 times 4 is 8 plus 8, that is 16. The square root of 16 is equal to 4. Hence, we have 4, 4. Letter D, x squared plus y squared equals 4. This is not a function because same values of x yield different values for y. An example is when x is equal to 1, we will get y is equal to positive or negative square root of 3. And when written as a set, the relation will have the elements 1 square root of 3 and 1 negative square root of 3. Hence, this is not a function. Dependent and Independent Variables in mathematical studies, there are generally two types of variables. The independent variables are what we expect to influence the dependent variables. The dependent variable is the outcome as a result of the independent variable. Say for example, if a researcher would like to explore whether high concentrations of vehicle exhausts impact incidence of asthma in children. Here, the vehicle exhaust is the independent variable, while asthma is the dependent variable. Another one, in studying a student's grade in particular subject and his performance in that subject. The student's grade is the independent variable, while the student's performance is the dependent variable. When a relation is a function, we can see this as a machine with x as the input and y or f of x is the output. Say for example the equation representing a relation, y is equal to 3x minus 1. Here, x is the independent variable while y 
is the dependent variable. The values of y depends on the value of x that is the input value in the equation. Let's have some examples. If x is equal to negative 2, then we substitute x equals negative 2 to the equation. That will be 3 times negative 2, negative 6, minus 1. y is negative 7. When we change the value of x, let's say x is negative 1, then we have 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, minus 1, that is negative 4. We do the same when x equals 0, 3 times 0, minus 1, that's negative 1. And when x equals 1, 3 times 1 minus 1, y equals 2. And when x equals 2, we have 3 times 2, 6 minus 1, y is equal to 5. That will be all. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more math lessons.